Today I want to talk about elevators. Now I'm not particularly an authority on this subject, but I do love the concept of elevators as an aspect of game design. If you think about the levels of your favourite games from the perspective of a developer, you need a way to transfer your players from map to map while maintaining atmosphere. A great way to accomplish this is by placing your players into a tiny low resource box that refuses to acknowledge anything about the outside world. Don't care. Elevators don't care about the angle of the sun or the map's render distance, where they came from or where they are going. All they care about is going up or down, and sometimes they don't even do that. They serve as a kind of liminal space within the game, a condensed area built from necessity but designed to fit the aesthetic. The iconic example here are Portal's elevators. Portal has a minimalistic art style that emphasizes shapes to guide the player forward. You're playing through chambers built with squares and rectangles that are filled with circular buttons and chamber locks. Everything that is meant to help you move forward is a circle, and the elevator is the biggest cylinder of them all. In a game that often feels stripped back and empty, the elevator always felt like a spaceship to me with its sound design, mysterious laser, and reflective properties. Are you a Fizzler or a crumpler? Talk about it in the... Fuck. Now the real question here is whether you like your elevators with the side of loading screen or not. Mirror's Edge is unique in how it lets you move around in real time for as long as it takes to load the next map. You can piece together details about the city and your job as a runner from the screens in each lift. The lack of a cut to black here really helps that feeling of momentum and uninterrupted movement the game is built around. In comparison, using an elevator to fade to a loading screen in your game is about as unique as the Buzz Lightyear toy aisle, but this technique being so established opens the window to far more creative uses, like being sent down thousands of meters into the bowels of Aperture Science in Portal 2, or Ultra Kill's endlessly falling end level screens, reminding the player of their canonical descent into hell. In a design meta where maps feel flat and skyboxes feel like the limit, these choices lend an impressive sense of scale and verticality to the games we know and love. I see writers use elevators as an opportunity for humour and panache. I can't recount every major plot point of Half-Life 2 since I played it years ago, but I still remember the Vortigaunt cooks making soup in Black Mesa East. There's a great Gmod map called Elevator Source that relies on this forward framing to deliver jokes and scares. I've often found these transitional environments fairly central to my enjoyment of a game. They're like the gaps between conversations with friends, introspective moments to reflect on how you really feel. I spent hours of my first Portal 2 playthrough watching the animations surrounding the game's elevators, and later reading the blue screen notice during Wheatley's control of the facility. The escape latch sequence in Mirror's Edge was my first experience with non-linear gameplay and good preparation for later playing through Half-Life's Gremlin-style level design. Even the classic Gmod Idiot Box series I watched growing up has a segment I love about Chuckles being stuck in a lift for an undetermined amount of time. Well, this is my flaw. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I'll, uh, catch you.